Uh, BJ, Steve Goff from the Washington Post. Uh, congratulations on the championship. Um, uh, to get a little more specific on players, I wondered what your impressions were of Gio tonight before he got hurt and the severity maybe of the injury. Um, and going forward, his importance to this program and for the, the technical staff to get back on the same page with him. Yeah, I mean, I mean spe specifically to Gio's performance tonight is a performance that you expect. Um, it, it shows his quality uh, that's on the field, his ball security, his ability to take on two, three players and connect passes. You know, and also what I'm really proud of him is we've challenged Gio to do more work off the ball on the defensive side, and he's absolutely risen to the occasion. <clears throat> when, when we speak about you know, going forward, he's a committed player to this team, just like all of the other guys on this team, as you can see their commitment to each other and to the, to the identity of the team and the way that we play. And so, as you know, the expectations remain the same for everybody in the group, uh, him included. Uh, Simon Evans, the FP. Just on a personal level, to come in never having had head coach experience and come into an international tournament, beat Mexico, beat Canada, win a, win a trophy that's going to be on your resume for the rest of your life. How does that feel for you personally? I mean, f for me, I've been with these guys since day one. Um, January 1st, 2019, and it, it's really just a culmination for all of us of all the work that we've spent over the last four and a half years building the culture, building the team, building the identity, um, and so I'm just super proud of the group. Uh, you know, we've been faced with adversity, we've been faced with obstacles and challenges, and it's only brought us all together. So my personal feeling is I'm absolutely elated for all of the guys, all of the staff, everyone that just continues to put so much into this. And to have those two performances is just a way for us to show the country and the world you know, how committed and collected we are. And there's something special happening with this team. Henry Bushnell from Yahoo Sports. Um, just to follow up on Gio, um, he's, he's played in that midfield role for this team. He's also played wide. Going forward, do you like, do you, do you like him in that, um, in that role where he has some freedom to drift to, to various places and, and kind of pull the strings from there? Yeah, sp specifically I think Gio represents what a lot of our players represent and what you saw tonight, which is um, versatility and they're adaptable. Um, and, you know, one of our anchors is diverse and, and how we operate with this. Tim Weah moves to, to, right back, to right wing back in the game and Luca De La Torre starts at center mid and moves to right midfielder. Gio Reynas playing an attacking midfielder. Sometimes he's playing a 10 role. And so, you know, for us, the, the, the whole thing is about doing whatever it takes for the group and being selfless. And, and he embodied that. The group tonight embodied that. And I think over the course of this tournament, you've seen that embodied by everybody. Hey, BJ. Doug McIntyre, Fox Sports. Congratulations, first of all. Sticking with the Geo theme, um, just curious about his injury status, if, if it's serious, how serious it is. Um, any up there there? Thanks. Yeah, so the only thing I know currently at the time uh, is that it's a, ca it's a calf injury. So I don't know the severity of it. We haven't had an opportunity to do a full eval. Um, there's obviously other things that are happening in the locker room. But, uh, you know, f for him, I can tell you that, you know, he would be someone that wants to be on the field. And so for him to come off the field, you know, it must be something because uh, he's not one to want to come off. But I don't have specifics regarding it. I can just tell you that it's a calf. Hey, BJ, Paul Tenorio from The Athletic. You talked yesterday about how the last Nations League was a validating moment for the group to, to know that they could perform in the big games. It felt like this one was about showing that they could carry the expectation to win versus showing they could win. How important was it to do that tonight? And, and how does that set forward the path ahead of, obviously, Gold Cup with a different group, but the, the Copa America in a year? Thanks. Yeah, that and. I would say the last two games embody our, what we're trying to challenge our players with as we continue to evolve this team. And, and we're looking even bigger. We're looking beyond to the 2026 World Cup. And we need to perform in high-intensity knockout games. You know? And that's something that we learned from the World Cup. And maybe we didn't, you know, we, we left there a little bit unsatisfied from the World Cup because of the knockout game and, and the performance. But we don't look at it as, as a setback. We look at it as an opportunity to grow. And now for us, we came in here motivated as an entire group that we want to get better. We want to get more battle tested. We want to be more experienced in knockout high intensity games. And this just gives us again, the confidence that, you know, two good moments to do it. And 
We can look forward to the Gold Cup to, again, expand the amount of player player pool that can experience tournament style play and not, and hopefully knock out tournament play um, and that'll like you said that'll continue through the Copa America and that's the message is to continue to battle test this group so that when we get to 2026 the players can perform with the, at the highest level with the highest level of confidence that they can that, that they can accomplish it Peace. For sure. BJ over here uh, Jeff Carlisle with ESPN um, you seem from the very beginning tonight to want to throw a lot of numbers, a lot of defenders at Alfonso Davies. How well did you think that worked? Um, were you concerned at all that some of their other talented attackers might hurt you if you did that? <laughs> yeah, I mean, Canada's a really good team. First of all, they're really well coached. Um, they're really well organized. They're another team that's adaptable, playing, you know, moving in and out of multiple shapes and positions and switching guys all over the field. So it was quite a, I would say it was quite a chess match tonight. Um, you have to respect the talent like Alfonso Davies, but the amount of attacking talent they have across the board is, is, uh, is really special for them. So we, we, of course, had our eye on it and wanted to help. Um, but at the same time, we thought if we were able to reduce enough space behind the back line and try to keep them all in front of us, we, we, we have a chance. If they were able to get behind us, we knew that it, you know, it could be problems. And, and I thought our guys executed uh, the game plan uh, as well as they could. Uh, and I understand that we suffered for, for long stretches of the time, but that's how finals work. And, and through that suffering, you saw the collective group doing whatever they did, blocking shots, blocking crosses, sliding the you know, intercept passes. They were willing to do anything um, to keep a clean sheet. And, and that's what we were able to do. Okay. Let's go here in the here. Yes, second row. Then. BJ, congratulations, Arturo Skadegui from uh, BH News. Talk about the importance of uh, having following just fall into the group and then just uh, just adapt so quickly and you know with with the same mentality as you guys. You've been with this team since 2019, and you know he just seemed to adapt really well and really fast. Just talk about the importance of that for the team. Yeah. So for Balo, I think he's a great <clears throat> example of what our culture is all about, right? So he's a player that came from the outside. He felt welcomed, he chose us, and now you see how quickly he can adapt. We have a very clear identity on how we want to play. So when we're able to spend time with him, he's able to do the on-field performance. And then I give him a lot of credit and I give the team a lot of credit for welcoming him in open arms, making him feel part of it. And I've said this before, the, you, you get the best out of players when they feel most comfortable, calm, and confident. And that doesn't just happen from on-field performances or tactics. That comes from the 22 other hours that they're spending off of the field together. And that's what's so special about this group. And it leads, and I'm not surprised at all how quickly Balo was able to, uh, to integrate into the group and now have you know, a really strong performance like he had tonight. We go, we take two more questions here. And finally in the third row. Thanks, BJ. Sanjay from uh, Back Heel, Scott Podcast, and thanks for coming. Uh, Two-part question. First part, um, set pieces. You had success with that tonight. We heard John Erdman talk about how deadly you guys were on seemingly every occasion. Could you talk about what goes into that success, whether it was the deliveries from from Geo or you know the prep? Just Greg identified that as an area that could be improved upon in the future, so if you can expand on that. And then... Um, with regards to the Gold Cup roster, there were no U-20s with the midfielders. Um, was that because of the Under-20 World Cup and kind of an agreement with their MLS clubs, um, the U-20s who were at the World Cup? And there's also some guys who weren't uh, released for that. Um, could you talk about the lack of U-20s in the, in the midfield? Thank you. Yeah, so in terms of set pieces, I would say that we, we, we look at all phases of the game and we have a process on how we prepare for throughout all, pro, uh, all phases. And offensive and defensive set plays are are no different, um, and so yeah, th there's a lot of factors that go into it. Obviously, there's the preparation and trying to find you know areas that of weakness maybe in the opponent that you can exploit. There's a lot of time spent with the players on the field doing deliveries and creating like timing and all of that. And so I think for us tonight, it came <clears throat> you know it, it sort of all came together. And it is an area that we are focused, like you, like you mentioned. You know, we don't believe that we performed in that phase 
as well as we could, and it's an area that we want to improve. And, and that's, I would say, a constant with, with our group um, and the way that we work is we don't look at things through really the results. We, we look at each phase. We have a process on how we want to evaluate it, and then we go about and how we can improve it. Um, in regards to the Gold Cup roster specifically, I mean, tonight's about the Nations League final. I can t the, the Gold Cup roster is, you know, again, the, the objective is to get as many people um, in this player pool that we can to, to experience group play and knockout stage play because we know that that will pay dividends to us as we continue this journey to 2026 World Cup. Final question, please. BJ, Paul Kennedy from Soccer America. Can you speak a little about Chris Richards, um, just his composure on the ball, work in the back, but also he was such a threat on, uh, on set pieces that, that John Herdman you know, talked about and just the size of, of the U.S. guys really made difficult for Canada. Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> Chris, Chris Richards is a top talent. Um, there's no, and he's a he's a, a a complete center back. He's got a he's got one of the highest ceilings that we know, and that's because just like you said, his threat in a lot of phases, um, his calmness on the ball, his ability to break lines with it, left foot, right foot, um, helps us in our attack. I mean, tonight his aerial duels, his his mobility to go side to side in the back five and block shots and intercept passes and cover in the channel. Um, and then you just add set pieces <laughs> to that profile. Um, I would say over the, la the those two games that we played, Mexico and Canada, he was one of the top performers. Um, we're super excited for what the future holds with him, knowing how young he is. And, you know, uh, uh, we're going to challenge him to continue to develop and continue to grow, get as much uh, uh, playing time as he can at his club. And, you know, uh, we look forward to working with him for a long time.